Hey everybody, so today I am going to be walking through what I have learned from interviewing 10 data scientists that have got jobs recently in the knowledge graph space. All right, and if you haven't caught my video on how to write a good resume, it's up here. Also my interview tips that I have given in the past. I help a lot of my colleagues when they are starting that initial job search and when they go through that interview process. So I said, yes, I will help you as long as you give me uh, some, some feedback once you're done so I can maybe make a video to help others that might be experiencing the same thing. All right, so let's go through my top 10 learnings from these individuals who successfully got jobs in the knowledge graph space. This, so the very first one is knowledge graph is booming. The, the folks that I know that got jobs in this space uh, or got new jobs in this space uh, are 10 total. And they ran the gambit from uh, the whole way from startups to giant companies that existed forever. And from every market you can imagine, from media to e-commerce to big tech giants uh, to government, you name it, uh, people were getting interviews for a lot of these and then landing the jobs afterwards. That's just the 10 that I talked to that got the job though. There were quite a few people uh, that I was trying to help that unfortunately didn't get an offer at the end of the day. But if you listen to this video and you watch all of the LinkedIn postings that I put out there that uh, I, I think are good opportunities for people to check out, it's just a really rich area to be working in right now. And it's also quite versatile. If you can work in a government organization and a startup and still be using very similar skill sets, that's pretty good if you're looking for a new position. The second thing was most of them, I think only two of them did not have a structured interview. So a structured interview is where the uh, organization uh, has certain criteria that they're going to test in each of their interviews. And they are really only asking questions to answer whatever that core competency is or that core value of the company is. So usually they direct you to their mission statement or something online, or maybe they'll send you something uh, that kind of walks through the, the way that their company feels about certain things and their value statement. So this was something that I helped a lot of them with is we kind of went through these lists together and kind of picked out like, okay, here are the things that they value. What are some of the experiences and stories that you have that you can use in the interview process when you are asked these questions? Another thing in that same vein is the HR people or the talent acquisition people are usually asking, hey, do you want to jump on a call and walk through this? Do you have any questions? Take them up on that. They're actually there to coach you through this whole process. So in all of the situations where, you know, the, the folks that I was talking to, they were like, should I take them up on it? I don't really think I need to talk to the HR person. Take them up on it. So the next one is about half of the teams were already established and the other half were not. So don't be surprised if the, the folks that you're talking to are not actually going to be on the team that you're going to be working on. Your team might actually not exist. Uh, in fact, if you get hired, you might actually have to interview the person who will eventually be your boss or your colleague. So this definitely was common because Knowledge Graph is not something that you traditionally see in a lot of companies. So they're kind of building up those teams and you might be the first one on that team. So most of the teams were in the uh, data science and technology space in the companies, but there were also at least two that were in the sales and marketing side, which I thought was kind of interesting. Those folks, when they were talking to me, they said that while they were still doing data science things um, with their knowledge graph, they were also uh, looking at click-through analytics and it was more of a, a BI role. Um, with their, their knowledge graph. And uh, the second one was more on the machine learning side where they were building knowledge graphs, but it was to help the machine learning folks. That's the other thing. When uh, I was really fascinated uh, when they were walking me through the structure, the org of all of the teams that they were talking to. So in most cases, and I'm actually really happy to hear this, 
the data scientist, the, the knowledge graph person, and the uh, data engineer were two different roles. So if you are trying to lay down the foundation of the pipeline and you're, you know, fitting pieces together so you can take those models and those analytics and do something else with them, that's one thing. Uh, but the folks that are actually building out the models, getting the right data, cleaning that data, that is um, something that is a very specialized skill. So it was really good to see that um, at least half of the companies were already structuring or thinking of structuring their teams in that way. Here's one you might be interested in. I uh, know there's a lot of things out there like Glassdoor and other things that tell you, you know, salary range, but for the knowledge graph space, again, on the data science side of knowledge graphs, uh, they most of them were starting around the 140 uh, a year mark. And so that's not to say that's going to be for everything. Of course, if you're at a startup, you know, the circumstances are a little bit different. They have different payment structures and, and that sort of thing at a startup versus, you know, something with, you know, like a government pension, for instance. So these, you know, are, are certainly not rules across the board, but in most of the cases, they were around that range. Another thing that I was happy and discouraged about. So happy in the way that a lot of companies do seem to be allowing work from home or um, when you need to work remote if you don't want to relocate. Um, half of the companies that these folks were, were working with um, or, or interviewing with at the time were okay with that. In fact, some of them were celebrating that. Uh, they were going to a completely remote model but then, this is the discouraging part, some were like, you're coming in or you're not working for us. I don't care how good you are. We only hire the best that are willing to relocate, is the, is the caveat. And I know this was a struggle for some when they were talking to me because I know one person in particular that was looking at, um, uh, I, I don't want to, you know, mention names. So it was a, uh, a dream job for this person. They would have to relocate and they had kids, they had um, elderly parents that, you know, wouldn't be able to relocate with them and they had to take care of them. So they unfortunately had to give up uh, their dream job, even though they got the offer. And from all that was said, they were the perfect candidate. And yet, because they weren't re willing to relocate and physically put themselves in a role, they weren't eligible, which was kind of a bummer. Now, if the entire company is physically there and you're the one and only person not, I can see why that would be a problem. But it's my personal opinion that if you're not allowing some work from home, uh, that's going to leave you behind with the rest of other you know companies that are allowing that. And I actually feel in my day job, um, I love looking at the talent pool of the entire world because you can find so many really wonderful people that have talents and experiences that you might not be able to find in a geographic location that you are physically situated in. All right, next up is some really liked to drink the Kool-Aid. If you don't understand that analogy, it basically means that their cultures were so prevalent that they erased your personality. And that was the exact words that one person um, used when, when I was kind of talking them through like, well, do you really want to work in a place like this? Um, it's great to have a company culture. In fact, you want to make sure you have a company culture and you understand what that looks like. And it, there's nothing wrong to be, you know, passionate and opinionated about, you know, what you want the general feel of your company culture to be. But if you're also basically asking everyone to act exactly the same way, it's not that encouraging and you're end up going to stifle people and maybe make echo chambers, which is also not a great work environment. So be careful of that because um, I don't think this is specific to just knowledge graph per se, but um, it was just kind of interesting that at least three of the companies involved um, with, with the people, they, they did end up taking the job. I know one is already looking again, <laughs> uh, so it's not for everyone, um, but those that do like it, you know, kudos to you. Next to last is don't be surprised if you have to teach your uh, colleagues or the person that you'd be reporting to or your interviewers 
what a knowledge graph is or what is data science or what is really machine learning. Don't be surprised if you kind of have to teach them and you don't want to be, you know, superiority and all that gross stuff. It's really, you know, they might not know. This might be a new capability, a new skill set that they're not really that familiar with. So sometimes you have to kind of walk them through, well, you know, here's what I, I have seen um, in my past that has worked out well. Or, you know, when I know other colleagues of mine that do knowledge graph, here's what they've experienced. So, you know, walking them through what your experience is, don't be uh, overwhelming to them, don't be uh, a know-it-all, but certainly help them understand what your skill sets are and how your skill sets fit into the other ones out there in the market that you know about. All right, and last but absolutely not least, is every single one of them were concerned with mental well-being. Every single one was asking the interviewer, you know, how are you doing? Um, you know, do you take mental health days? Um, are there things that you're going to need from us? And then they were also, some of them had specific days of the week that they just said, this is just a day for you to not have meetings and just get the things done that you need to get done. And so... It was really nice to hear that, that especially in this crazy time that we are all living in, uh, that even, you know, these huge companies and startups that might not know better <laughs> um, are taking their employees or their potential employees um, health to heart. Uh, all right. So with that. I hope this has helped you, especially if you are in that interview process or if you are looking for a new role. Uh, these things were specific to the knowledge graph space, but uh, they definitely are not only for the knowledge graph space. So even if you are not looking for a position in this area, I hope this list has helped you a little bit too. All right. So with that, I want to thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.